Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In Lent, we are invited to do two basic things in the Christian church. The first is to renew our relationship with God, and the second is to renew our work on God's behalf in the world. And so today, I want to take those two themes and look at the Scripture uh, that we had in our, our Gospel Scripture today, where Mary anoints um, Jesus' feet. They're probably, as we're told, at a meal it's Saturday evening after the Sabbath, Uh, There's some debate about whose house they're actually at. There's some question about who the different players are, but uh, the facts are probably not as important as the words that are spoken. Following the meal, a crazy thing happens, right? And that is that Mary uh, gets up and anoints Jesus' feet with this perfume. It's very difficult for us to understand the expense of this perfume. And so I did, a couple years ago, I kind of got out my calculator and figured it out. It's as if she took $18,000 of perfume and poured it on his feet. Okay, that's the extent of the extravagant nature of what she has done. And of course, Judas, And there's probably some some, uh, 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 post-resurrection discussion here, but Judas gets all over about this expensive gift that she's made, and Jesus tells Judas to leave her alone. Now, I want to suggest to you that Mary actually is our gospel image today, that her action is, that Mary's offering is, in fact, not strange in Jesus' eyes, but an appropriate response to the abundance of God's love. Mary has made what is considered a gospel choice. It's the one that reflects God's love. It returns abundant love to God in Christ Jesus. Jesus has been teaching, after all, in the parables about God's prodigal love. We heard, just heard that this last week. Prodigal meaning crazy, outrageous, unrestricted, reckless love. In human terms, the kind of love that God provides us is wasteful. That's how extravagant God's love is for us, just like the perfume. God's love is that kind of love that is forgiving of all sin and all brokenness. That means that no matter what happened in your life this week, and you and I could probably each make our own list of failures, personal failures, family failures, things we'd like to take back, things we wish we hadn't done, all of that brokenness, and God still loves us. In fact, no matter what road you took in your whole life to reach today, God's love is bigger than any of that sin and brokenness. That's the kind of amazing love that we are being shown in this story. And you and I can make the list, and the truth is next week we'll have a new list of our failures, won't we? Right? And and God's love will be bigger than those failures, no matter how big they are. God's love will continue to reach out to us. The extravagance of Mary's action is a reminder of God's extravagant love. And the evidence is all around you. Think of the people who love you, no matter what failures 
you might have. Those who grab you and hang on to you despite your faults. Think about this community, this church, such as where everyone is welcome and nobody is turned away and God's love is made real, assuring you that you, as soon as you walk in these doors, are worthy of belonging and of love, no matter what brought you here. That's the way God's love is. Consider this, that God's love is beyond human ability to confound. Mary's gift is unexpected as well as is God's love because, as Amy Poehler says, we all have voices in our heads running the same stories about ourselves over and over and over again about how we're not good enough. And sometimes Amy Poehler just says, look, I don't have time for that today, (laughs) right? God's love washes over that and is there to remind you that those are lies you're telling yourself. Mary's gift is the hug of the wasteful, loving Father. Mary's gift invites us then also to figure out how you and I are going to respond to this love, which is the second action and work of a Lenten discipline. Mary's act reminds us perhaps of the words from the book of Hebrews that really what we're invited to do in response to God's amazing love is do good works and share what we have especially with the poor and those in need. Certainly there will always be need on earth. That's part of what Jesus says. But we're not let off the hook of opening our hand and giving the need when asked. Judas's question does have merit, I think, and that like Jesus and his companions, we're invited to share this abundant love with the cause of the poor and those left out of society, those who are blacklisted in society, and to stand up for them and say, no way, God loves you too. God seeks to restore all people into community to welcome and love members back into society, so much so that we're not just interested in the daily handout, but in full restoration of individuals into the life of community, and that this is the normative work of Christianity. You'll hear the refrain of this, in fact, in our confirmation service about work and service that God's given us to do. You hear it at the end of every Eucharist reminding us to go out and serve as God has given us work to do. So like Mary, I think we're to recognize what we've been given, this crazy, abundant, prodigal love, and that we have been given in life and death our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to respond to that love with a profound gratitude and to mimic God's abundant, crazy love so that others may also find this prodigal father, this extravagant perfume of God's love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.